You're listening to This Week in Property. Stay current, relevant and up to date in the world of property investment. Learn from the UK's leading property professionals and grow your property business. Hello and welcome to This Week in Property. I'm your host Richard Swan and in today's show I have sat down and spoken with, prepare yourselves, an estate agent. <gasps> I know, I know, dear listeners, I can hear you, all those investors out there booing and jeering me. How could you, Richard? How could you? But it doesn't have to be that way. They don't have to be the enemy. They don't have to be the pantomime villain. And I found one of the good guys. In fact, one of the great guys. A gentleman by the name of Stuart Wiley from Walker Wiley Estate Agency, very close to us here in Glasgow and with a fantastic track record and experience in the property world, finger on the pulse, certainly in the city and uh, more so property in general and we had a brilliant chat, Stuart was a fantastic guest, we covered everything, we kind of went bigger with things like Brexit, interest rates, We went local, spoke about the market, what he's seeing, some examples that he's uh, personally seen and dealt with, some of the wins, some of the challenges. We've looked at different perspectives from buyers, sellers, investors, first-time buyers, landlords, you name it, properties, how should they be done, internally, externally, the curb appeal, the refurbs, the level finish, what things should be considered and not considered, how should we weigh up things like the questions we ask, like should I dress this property before I sell it on? Should I not? Should I save the money? What level of finish should I be looking for? What are the features I should look out? How can we find a good estate agent? What kind of things should they be doing for us to market it, to get the property sold and seen in the best light? A ton of things and uh, very, very appreciative for Stuart's time, his knowledge, his input, the ideas, the experience and the chat in general that we had. I think you're going to get a lot from it. So without further ado, Please meet Mr. Stuart Wiley. So, Stuart, good to see you. Thank you very much for inviting us, Richard. Yes, thank you for popping in. Looking forward to this wee chat, I'll tell you. So, oh my goodness, the estate and the character, <laughs> that negative connotation of the property world. People already swearing under their breath, driving their cars, we're going to hear who? <laughs> so, instead of that, that hooded character, we, we have deliberately brought in the fluffy side of that world. Good, the good. cuddly teddy bear of that side of the world. The guy who can correct all of those uh, kind of bad <laughs> bad perspectives. <laughs> so from the famous um, Walker Whaley Estate Agents. Indeed, yes. Yes, here in lovely Glasgow, getting that local perspective, which I really enjoy. Mm. Uh, but we'll we'll have a chat and we'll take you on a, a wee journey to see okay. your opinions on hey, the whole market, you know, because it's, mm. it's a big, big world, as you know, mm-hmm. this property stuff. Mm-hmm. But first of all, uh, let's dive into your good self. How did you get to here? How did you get to being this part of the puzzle inside the property world? Interesting. Was it the five-year-old that's always dreamed of being an estate agent? I, I couldn't quite claim that, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was then, I played my wife and um, I was actually selling my first ever flat that I bought. Um, right. And then um, I was dealing with um, a, a great group of guys who were also selling the property for us. And um, I would always had an inclination towards property, as, as most oh, people do. I think yeah. it's obviously something that's evident um, in our psyche, in terms of British psyche, Scottish psyche, we call it. Um, and I really enjoyed also the whole process and at that point in time um, they were recruiting uh, they got me in for a chat um, and before you know it I'm trying to count up in my head how many years later <laughs> we <laughs> find ourselves many. sitting here um, and um, yeah. so it's, it's been a journey over a long period of time and mm-hmm. I enjoy the job very much still loving it, still feel the passion still do, yeah. I, I think even more so now that we've kind of moved over to, to setting up our own business mm. and, and I think it's just a, a, a climax to all the experience I've had over the years and it all really was hopefully aimed at some point in time to do this so mm-hmm. I'd like to say I'm living the dream which is true in, in many many ways <laughs> um, but uh, still a lot of hard work but no I certainly do enjoy the industry um, Brilliant. It's, it's a great challenge every day yeah, excellent so we've, we've kicked off 2018 mm-hmm. uh, but before we chat about where we are and what your opinions are going forward and forecast and that kind of thing how was last year for you? How would you kind of summarise 2017 for you? I'd probably say that the market was a bit relentless um, within Glasgow. Within Glasgow. And, um, and every time we're doing market updates and trying to communicate messages to, to the wider public and, and how the market's going, one phrase just keeps on coming back and back and it's um, is supply and demand ratio. Right. It's as simple as that. We can talk about economic factors, we can talk about interest rates, we mm-hmm. can talk about Brexit. 
we did talk about all these different aspects, but generally speaking, I do, do believe that it's um, supply and demand that's been dictating the market. Yeah. Uh, and that's mainly in relation to the, the, the prices that have been obtained. Mm-hmm. And I know we can't obviously speak about the, the whole of Scotland because it's very much regional. Sure. Uh, but where our local knowledge is, is in Glasgow and the surrounding areas, um, the overwhelming majority of properties that we're bringing onto market um, are gaining an awful lot of interest. Right. Um, I think there's a lot of pent up demand there. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a result of that, um, you know, we've got many examples that are just as a kind of due process, get the property onto market, market in impeccably as we do, and promote it um, to the widest possible audience, and um, they will come mm-hmm. um, and get many viewers. And ultimately, the vast majority of properties are selling at closing dates. Are they? Um, and this has been the mainstay in terms of you're getting competition between buyers, and ultimately, you're going to get a better price for your client, which yeah. is great for our clients. Because um, it can create that sense of competition, and, and I probably say that's been the mainstay mm-hmm. of 2017 is the increase in prices. Right, so you saw that. Oh, very much. Was it much? Was it stable? Was it slight? Uh, well, I'd probably suggest to you that in even um, in our kind of summaries, um, we're probably looking even 2017 growth rates, depending obviously property type, exact location, but mm-hmm. in many cases you're talking between five and twelve percent. Really? Um, over the course of the last twelve months. Right. Um, and I think that probably stands true in some of the other kind of national statistics that have appeared. Mm-hmm. Um, in their inbox and probably support that belief as well Right Supply and demand that is always that way with property isn't it UK specifically I mean so. you know, that, that island that's enclosed and yes. well we've only got this much space Exactly We've got this population it's And I think it's just probably the biggest market force in any commodity mm-hmm. yeah, Exactly No matter what we are yeah. and it dictates yeah. price mm-hmm. um, and whether that's a healthy thing is, is open off a whole other debate yeah. uh, and that could drive a stable or we potentially maybe just kind of corner ourselves into um, the same situation we found ourselves into in 2009. Are you creating another bubble? Is that what you're doing up here? Well, I, 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 think it's the, I think it's just obviously the, 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 that sense of competition mm-hmm. that's driving it. Yeah. Um, and we always thought there's other indicators out there that might potentially put the brakes on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do recall when, when we first started the business, um, we, we launched and um, just just coming up for two years ago mm-hmm. um, and we're just getting our, our teeth into it um, mm-hmm. and we're all sitting there saying obviously the Brexit vote was coming up and, yeah. and, and everybody's ah, it'll be fine it'll be <laughs> fine I know we're getting close to it and obviously everybody's got their own political persuasions um, yeah. and um, I went to bed that night thinking I'm not even going to bore staying up because I'll wake up tomorrow and <laughs> we'll still be in Europe <laughs> um, but I woke up and it was obviously um, the decision went another way and yeah. you're thinking okay I've just obviously given up a uh, I pay salary, set up a new business, and I really thought that might be, obviously be a problem for for the estate agency. But I really can't also say it's been felt in any way, shape, or form. Right, nothing at all. Really, nothing, nothing at all. No, no stagnation, no pausing. No, not really no. pausing, and, yeah. and I think even maybe a slight pause until people got their heads around it. Um, right. And then okay. it was business as usual. You know, literally weeks after. Right. They may have also a wee bit of an incline for overseas buyers. Um, uh-huh. That's always something, but it's not makes a, a great stay of our business. Right. Um, so no, obviously it may affect other people in the industry. Um, a wee more. Um, because that's what we focus on but, but generally speaking for us we, we didn't really have any effects whatsoever mm. um, interest rates historically low uh, mm-hmm. which we know and uh, can't also mean that way forever we do get time just to cheap money mm. um, and also I think there's potential over the next course of the next 12 months and uh, depending on what happens also the Brexit they, they may only go one way but yet yeah. again not really having a massive effect on that appetite out there uh-huh. um, and it's a wee bit frenzied at points mm-hmm. um, especially what we're focused on uh, as people are just desperate to go onto the market um, right. and this um, relationship between home report value and indeed final sale price uh-huh. um, is, is quite interesting to look at Yeah, what are you finding there? Oh, in recent terms? And, and even recent terms, I can mm-hmm. give you so many examples we were just having a, a quick chat before we started mm-hmm. um, of, of a property we brought on in, in, in a good street in Charlotte and um, the Kaiser home report valuation of 150000 right. a nice two bedroom remodel period flat uh, in smashing condition um, offers over 139 uh, mm-hmm. but on Tuesday of last week um, and as a result of today um, when we were only obviously seven days down the line we've got ex- excess of 50 viewers oh, which is frightening I'll say it all day Saturday <laughs> a busy Saturday <laughs> a busy Saturday I'll say yeah. uh, that's what I was supposed to be an online ah, stage exactly <laughs> my whole Saturday's disappeared <laughs> uh, and I'm there this evening for another 20 viewers and it's no. closing for offers 
um, on Friday, and um, it's fair to say we've already had um, two offers well in excess of home port value. Is that right? Um, and there's many cases of that. Yeah. Yeah, the final figure obviously by divulged on, on Friday when it closes for offers at 12 noon. Mm -hmm. um, but many examples, um, um, and even what we might class as first time buyer territory between the kind of 125 and up to maybe 225, mm -hmm. in many cases you're getting 20 grand, 25 grand over home port price. Really? Um, and what you tend to find is quite often there's maybe six to ten offers that you may find that in the middle you've got a concentration of offers that are a wee bit over home report mm -hmm. um, but inevitably what we're finding is you always get the, the one big stonker um, <laughs> that's obviously somebody who's lost out four or five closing days prior and they're just thinking do you know what have all the money um, this wow. is the situation we're in and because um, they're desperate to go into the market it's a desperation um, is that also hitting them from the point of you trying to get the lending very much so you know, those lenders are looking at that old report whoa, whoa, what are you well, getting well quite interesting yeah. enough because we have this thing uh, uh, we obviously belt and braces approach when it comes to a closing date and mm -hmm. um, when we're looking at all the offers uh, we make a point of obviously phoning solicitors Right. Um, just to make sure is that right? um, their client is aware of the relationship between home and port value and the price of pain. Because yeah. as you know, the lender's only interested. But just for easy maths, if, if you're 100 grand um, home port value, for whatever reason, the price is agreed at 110, and you've got a first time buyer there that's got a 10 grand deposit, 90% loan to value, mm -hmm. um, and they pay 110, then I hope you don't understand that I'll say that the bank <laughs> is just going to redo it on 110. Yeah. You need an extra 10 grand to add to your deposit. Uh -huh. um, so most solicitors are obviously on the ball, but we've right. had a few cases. Really? Where it's been, okay, I might just go and phone my client <coughs> and I'll get back to you. So it doesn't happen very often. But yet again, you know, it's such a serious point when you're dealing with obviously sales. Yeah. Um, that you need to make sure that everything is obviously um, lined up and, and everybody's aware of it before obviously you're going to accept an offer. Uh -huh. And it's just becoming increasingly evident that is the case. Right, right. Um, which is great for obviously um, for, for sellers out there. Totally. Um, but as many sellers do obviously confess, it's, it's fantastic, but um, they're just using that money to pass it on. They've got the next move, haven't they? You know, so, Where am I going so now? So, unless you're selling and pitching up a tent in Glasgow, Green, and <laughs> or going to a hut in Thailand or something, in Thailand, to cash it in. I'm going to move myself from the whole equation. <laughs> and then also, and depending on how successful you are buying at the other end, it mm -hmm. tends to be just moving the money from one place to another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's generally the market, obviously. It's, it's been for many, many years, um, mm -hmm. and that's where we stand at this moment in time. Right. Now, you touched upon Brexit, touched upon interest rates. Mm. What's in the what's the chat in the office now? Because obviously, you, you were talking about the vote at the time, yeah. and having that night's nice sleep, and waking mm -hmm. up, and then a couple of weeks of, oh, okay, yeah. but then people getting into the grip of it. Yeah. Now, as we've kind of went through a lot of mess, and yeah. a lot of kind of muddiness, mm -hmm. what's the chat in the office been? How I, can you see it going? I, I, I still wait for it to happen, this calming down, yeah. um, and it may well be, <laughs> it may well be a past the <laughs> years down really seem to be a uh -huh. and even when you're speaking to people on the phone and uh, as you know within their industry you're talking to affairs you're talking to Swiss you're talking to yeah. obviously more importantly um, and colleagues within the industry um, and indeed obviously uh, on, on the ground with, with buyers mm -hmm. um, and it's just not really a conversation that's really had right um, and I do find it a wee bit mystifying um, to, to a point um, but um I think we'll just have to see how our government um, in control just now. Um, mm. Really, obviously, uh, what happens over the course of the next 12 months. And I think it's fair you're asking the question of me. Yeah. Uh, to be honest with you, you ask the question of our government, and I don't really think they probably have the answer either. It certainly doesn't look that way. <laughs> <It doesn't really laughs> look that way. Jumping from one chaos to the next. Ah, so oh, so I, I think it will be um, what will be, will be. And um, right. I'll certainly think there might be. Some more news or three things happen in the next six months. We'll just to see what that effect that has on the market. Uh -huh. And the chats around the office on the interest rates, mm -hmm. do you think the two of them are completely handcuffed to each other, the Brexit, the, or can you see, do you have any yeah. gut feel about how the Bank of England are going to play with things anyway, well, no I, matter what? I, well, I think they will have to make a stance, mm -hmm. um, and I think they will have to be very sensitive to it, um, mm -hmm. because it's probably, you know, we can talk about inflation and how that's um, pinched against all the interest rates. That's the most probably common denominator that we've always had yeah. in terms of relation to interest rates and how to try and control them. Um, but I really do think Brexit will be uh, another part of that. And right. it very much depends how the money markets, the global money markets, kind of look at it and how they feel about it. Mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of how the success of the, the so-called divorce, uh, if it's on amicable terms. Yeah. Um, and I think that's obviously a, a big question that still remains to be answered. Definitely. You were talking about Glasgow really nicely. Things mm. are things are sounding good from a yeah. uh, market level, business mm. level, value level, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And you know, we get thousands of listeners who, who a big clump of them will be 
just investors they yeah. want to know and mm-hmm. there's lots of them down south for mm-hmm. example who can look up here because they look at things mm-hmm. like yields and returns and like, sure. you know money's not going to go far in the big city of London yeah. whereas if you start to look North England mm-hmm. start to look into Scotland uh, there's a nice wee balance I think with Scotland where we've got that good return mm-hmm. and you know the figures are a lot better this is nice but also I've always found we've had that stability yeah. it's not a chaotic thing you know mm-hmm. London up London down London up London down you know this mad bubble chase mm-hmm. uh, do you feel that as well we've got a nice kind of aye it, it's going up yeah. but it's it's containable it's controllable yeah. we're kind of on top of things here well I think I think uh, from an investor's point of view um, I think it is relatively stable mm-hmm. um, and um, you know if whether it's obviously whether you're looking to to invest with regards to renovating and then put it back on the market button doing that flip um, then I think you probably be able to take advantage of the, the good figures that are being obtained out there yeah. um, but as we know it is, it's just so property specific yeah um, and, and, and even within Glasgow you know as, as we all know that there's areas that are performing better than others. Uh-huh. Um, in terms of the buy to let market, yet again, I think that the same applies with regards to the lack of supply. Right. And I think that yet again we can pull back to to, to government, um, you know, stance on it in terms of the, the their viewpoint and the way they're trying to obviously make changes to legislation that I think is quite prohibitive for private landlords. Definitely. Um, yeah. I think it's one thing having that stance if mm-hmm. you're able to back up in terms of got social housing to be able to Exactly. But here's here's our answer yes. by the way. Yeah, yeah. but it seems to be <laughs> it seems to be potentially penalise penalise um, all private landlords. Um, and then, you know, at the same point in time, they're still looking for them to be able to bridge that gap that they're unable to do. Yeah. Um, and go back to supply and demand, whether it's rental, whether it's sales. You know, if you look at targets that, that, that we as a, as, as a country, whether it's Scotland or whether it's been Britain, mm-hmm. have had in terms of the targets for creating new homes. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think also we've failed miserably probably over the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, totally. Um, time after time. Time it's after always time. promised. Yeah. And just never. And for every year a target's missed, then yeah. it just. you catch in the next year it's compounded isn't it's it? compounded exactly yeah. and you take to think in terms of some dudes to do the, the maths on it mm-hmm. you know where the shortfall is at this point in time if we've missed targets historically oh my goodness um, and I think it all becomes clear when we look at it in terms of where the market is just now mm-hmm. um, it might not be that forever it never is mm-hmm. um, but I, I like you say it, like, it'll be interesting to see what develops over the next few months mm-hmm. so the, invest- the investor sorry listening mm-hmm. in from England and so mm-hmm. on how would you kind of guide them around Glasgow? What areas would you talk to them about? How would you kind of geographically kind well, of Well, where we specialise is in murals, the, the, the great thing about local knowledge, I think that's what you really need from your estate agent. Yes. Um, and um, you know, while we cover the whole of Glasgow, uh, I can specialise in, in the south of the river, mm-hmm. um, whereas um, my, my colleague, uh, business partner, concentrates on the, 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 the north and right. rest. Right. Um, and within those areas, if you pretty much take Glasgow City Centre and draw yourself like any three to four mile radius um, mm-hmm. from there, mm-hmm. um, then uh, from that point of view, I think there's great opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's whether obviously what level of the market you want to go if you're looking for a buy to let investment. Yeah. I think it really comes down to a point where you want to be cash positive uh, at the end of every month mm-hmm. um, or where you really want to take the viewpoint as a longer term. Mm. Uh, and you're looking for that balance of paying down obviously capital um, throughout obviously the rental of the property with a keen eye on obviously um, potential capital growth mm-hmm. and I think they're two very different markets and I think investors um, concentrate maybe I think for a proper portfolio I think you have a mixture of the two exactly whereas um, uh, quite a few investors might just go for the, the kind of positive cash at the end of every month um, based on that um, and maybe not too concerned about obviously capital growth because mm-hmm. certain areas um, you will have the same issues and it's not yeah. going to get the same growth rates yeah. um, whereas um, other areas um, you will be able to get that growth rate mm-hmm. uh, in terms of capital appreciation so right. I think it depends where you sit in your portfolio but as we mentioned it's probably better to have a mixture of the two exactly try and cover yourself get that spread that diversity sure yeah totally yeah. so in that world of business this we mentioned online mm-hmm. how's all that going with things because obviously yeah. people are walking about it used to be in the past sure. you'd have to head down the high street you'd have to look inside the window Indeed. and then you know the beauties of right move and everything popped up on the internet for yeah. us and then now all of a sudden you walk down the street these days and there's so many colours of different boards of course. you know there's a the guy you're Recognise there's the uh, kind of offshoot of someone who is in the high street. Mm. There's somebody called Purple Bricks. There's somebody called this, that, and the other. Yeah. 
how are you viewing things here? Is it tough? Is it competitive? Is it it's, strange? I think, I think it's incredibly competitive. Yeah. Um, whether you isolate high street estate agents and, and, and traditional um, method of how they sell properties, mm-hmm. uh, I think even the competition within um, high street estate agents is fierce. And, right. Um, you know, it's always has been the case. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you look at um, the competition within the so-called online or hybrid estate agency um, sector, there's great competition within that. Mm-hmm. If you take it as a whole kind of parcel. Um, then the same applies it's just a massive com- uh, competition mm-hmm. and, and I think that's what's maybe part and parcel we're talking about supply and demand and then um, there's a distinct lack of obviously new properties going to market mm-hmm. therefore from a stage point of view um, there's more competition to also win those um, instructions yeah. and I think the, the, the online aspect of it is, has been a breath of fresh air for, for, for the market and it's just from our point of view, um, mm-hmm. we really just want to, the ability to be able to present to people and, and give them an alternative approach. Right. And, and that's the main thing, just something for their consideration. Right. And be able to spell out to them, you know, what is the fundamentals and obviously being able to sell your property and what is really required and we're talking through the sequence. Right. And the one thing I keep on coming back to is, is do we really, really, really need that high street presence? in order to be able to attain the results that we feel we're capable of and, and evidently so in terms of looking at the transaction we've had over the course of this first started, mm-hmm. then we don't feel we're missing out on anything. Right. And, and I think we're giving our clients the best opportunity at the best price. Mm-hmm. And the one thing that I just don't feel that it's that kind of secret thing you really need is, is the ability to be able to walk up to your local high street in order to be able to actually source properties yeah, or, or keep abreast of what's going on. Uh-huh. Um, because as we mentioned, that there's one dominant factor in our industry that controls everything and and that beast is right with. Yeah, um, it's still the same. It's still the same. Still and I think it's growing and growing and growing. Uh-huh. And statistics that we look at is, you know, in terms of their market share for portal access, you know, I think it's sitting roughly between 85 and 87%. It's still up that high, yeah, is it? Um, yeah, so yeah, um, it's, um, it's between 9 and 11%, given yeah. what source you take it from. And, and the rest of it, that small piece of the pie is just made up the also brands, which. Right. Um, and I can't quite recall the last time that we put a property onto market and we obtained an inquiry out with anything from obviously right with our simple. Mm-hmm. And so that probably tells a story in itself. Mm. And because that's such a, a, a powerful animal in terms of being able to um, showcase and expose your property to the market, um, then I generally do feel that you know that kind of um, high street approach is it's not as powerful as it once was. Right. Um, because the power is all with right move and it's a great platform. Yeah, and, and what we try to do is, is be able to harness that just like high street estate agents do mm-hmm. um, but the way that we can obviously um, our services are, are very much is based on our overheads mm-hmm. and there's no great magic secret to it like yeah. we can do it cheaper exactly. um, the last thing we want to do is, is, is be um, deemed as, as, as a cheaper option we are indeed that but it's, it's it's not through default, it's just for the fact that it's in line with our overheads. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what gives us the advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same point in time, I, I think the, the, the online aspect of it can sometimes be quite fearful right. for sellers out there. They, uh-huh. they might feel it's a bit too national, right. a wee bit too remote. We've already mentioned that um, one, one, big players, figures, yeah, yes, uh-huh. one big player in and particular that is, you know, is, is great in one way because it's, it's raising exposure for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the same point in time, we, we generally do believe we're, we're, we're very, very much different. Mm-hmm. Um, from that approach because we want to make it more localised uh-huh. we want to be guys that you know are, are being an issue for a long period of time within that given area Yeah. Um, and we're able to, to talk to them about previous sales and individual streets with, with yep. personal knowledge of it uh-huh. um, and you're not getting that facelessness of it you're getting that one point of contact mm-hmm. um, and you're getting that sense of well, you're, you're dealing with the business owner um, and give, hopefully give them that confidence um, whereas maybe the, the kind of national approach to it I think some people are a wee bit frightened to think well it looks great and I understand what they're saying but sometimes my biggest asset I maybe reverting to my comfort zone and, yeah. and I think that's something that high street estate agents will, will still have for a period right. of time right. um, but the online market is growing and growing and growing yeah. and um, we just want to try and position ourselves somewhere between right. your high street option and um, your national online option and, and that's exactly who we're trying to position ourselves as a hybrid estate agent. Right, trying uh, to get the best of both worlds. Best of both worlds. I'm not saying an estate agent saying the best of both worlds, you can have it, uh, but we generally do believe that is obtainable. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, we've just got that nice fit in terms of you know borrowing something from the high street estate agency, mm-hmm. borrowing aspects from the online aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a result of that, we feel we just sit in the middle quite comfortably. Um, mm-hmm. And we're getting great feedback from our, our clients that they feel it's, it's something that they feel comfortable with, and that's mm-hmm. the most important aspect. Right, let's jump into some of the nitty gritties. Get your opinions on them, because when you when you started talking about right with straight away in my mind, I could visually see an advert. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, know, you can see the photographs, you can see the walkthrough, you can see the layouts, the floor plans, all mm-hmm. this kind of stuff. 
How are you finding stuff there? Mm-hmm. Uh, how important is it for the photography to be done right? The angles. Yeah. What's your opinions on these virtual tours and yeah. the 360 things and yeah. video walkthroughs? Where are you seeing things there? Because right. you're talking about your upselling, you know, the, the beauty of the online world. Right. It's right. great, you can see stuff and you can get right. about it. How, how important is it? Well, I think we touched on the importance of uh, marketing. It's probably something that's quite... I feel particular about right, um, and um, we we play um, we we really do say to our clients it's it's one of the most important aspects. Right, if we're talking about the fundamental process of getting your property onto market, uh-huh. and we've already discussed, and everybody knows there's a means of being able to get that message out there through mm-hmm. Rightwave or through Zoopla or or the also runs. Um, then you actually break it down to well, what are you actually getting out there. The message is equally as important. Therefore, the quality of market I think is is, is imperative, um, mm-hmm. and that's why you know, it's not just a simple case of. Thankfully, the days of obviously uh, guys walking about and uh, with compact cameras is, is, is pretty much gone. <laughs> now, when, when, even if I go back five, six, seven years ago, the advantage I used to get um, over um, other state agents was the fact that I had a, a, a digital wide angle place camera. Right? Uh, <laughs> I'd point it out to people and say, well, do you know if I'm taking a picture here and I'm getting your whole bay window and I'm getting your beautiful period fireplace and your yeah. nice mountain shot? And this guy's not. Well, uh-huh. it's, it's just the fact I've got a better camera, a better lens. Yeah. But even with that, even if you have the right tools that most people have, it's you know like it's, it's how you use them. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all about presentation. Yeah. And we all sit down with clients and say, well, do you know I'm a great believer. Let's get your property in the best condition we possibly can in mm-hmm. um, terms of presentation. Um, and this is just showcasing your property that you wish to sell and get the best price for to the widest possible audience. So let's take that opportunity. Um, so those um, small things like um, dish towels over oven handles, fairy wicker bottles sitting out, um, bleach bottle next to the toilet, we've all got in our own house. You start to complain to yourself, yeah, I mean, you want to get something off your chest of itself, is this a challenge? <laughs> well, 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 the way I look at it is I always be, you know, very politely and say, listen, I've got, I've, I've got all these things in my house, yeah. as we all do. But yeah. you know, when it comes to the point of obviously capturing images of the property, let's just put them in the cupboard. Yeah. You know, let's make sure that bed's nicely ironed and, and made and what have you. And you've nothing sitting out. And um, it's amazing sometimes that we have a laugh when you, when you see properties that are coming on and you see the, the, the exercise bike in, in the bedroom that never gets used and it's got dressing gown over it and oh, last night's suit crumpled up in the corner. And I don't blame the, the owners, I really, really don't. Right. I, I, I put the blame on the estate agent because they should have taken the time. Because they should have, yeah. 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 So, yet again, we're not talking this as rocket science here. Yeah, it's really exactly. not. If you just deal with the fundamentals, mm-hmm. um, and one of the most important aspects is when somebody clicks on to right now, double clicks your property from search results, they've got a sequence of anywhere between, I don't know, 10 and 15 images. Mm-hmm. And you're guaranteed they're going to spike them in a matter of 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where they're going to get base their opinion on. Sure, mm-hmm. they're going to skim read the text, they're going to look for the key points, double yeah. glazing, gas central heating, what it may well be, uh-huh. in terms of specification. Uh, and I think they probably go to the floor plan even before that. So right, it's really? really the floor plan and it's uh, uh, predominantly the photographs. Mm-hmm. And if somebody doesn't see what they were hoping to see, yeah. it doesn't take much to backspace. Yeah. Go back to your search results and, and see something else it's there. So keep throwing over it. Over it. Yeah. Um, and I think that um, quality of, of, of marketing is improving mm-hmm. throughout the industry. Right. Um, but if you really want to excel, it just takes that a little bit more time. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I've also um, been guilty of sitting there overnight with my wife looking at me, uh, with my laptop in front of me. Um, going through what she thinks is two identical pictures and I'm trying to say what one's better and she says I think, Spot the difference. I, I, think, I think that's maybe moved about two millimetres um, I'm a big thing on, on things being nice and symmetrical oh, dear, not looking dear. down on rooms getting the right kind of viewpoint right, I've been doing okay. it for such a long period of time that yeah. I generally do believe that I'm not a great person to go out and photographing birds and waterfalls and lovely scenery, but I tell you what, I can photograph a house. You know a house. And I know all the angles to use before I walk into a room, I know exactly what images. And right. If I leave a property uh, with an excess of obviously 100 images, then I'll be the one that's sitting in the night cycling through them, touching up uh, and making sure that they're as good as it possibly can be. Right. And that with an accurate um, scaled uh, floor plan, uh-huh. not a floor plan that the bathroom looks the same size as the bedroom, <laughs> and just one big square, obviously divided up, making sure it's accurate. Um, and, um, a well- I don't know what you're <laughs> suggesting is on. <laughs> and a well-written text. And, and yet again, let's say we're dealing with fundamentals here, and, and I think that's the most important thing, and I don't think it's something that that um, you can take for granted. Mm-hmm. And when people are looking to choose an estate agent, I generally do believe if you really think you're considering somebody, well, look at that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. It's one thing saying they're open seven days a week and they're open 24 hours a day and you can phone mm-hmm. me at midnight and I'll book in a view and all this. Yeah. Um, but it really comes down to what the fundamentals are. And if you're looking for a, a estate agent to showcase your property, 
what kind of physical going to do it. Right. Everybody's got the same means of advertising it, but look at the detail. Right. Um, because it again, why take the risk in today's marketplace? Mm. Make it as good as you possibly can. That's a good show, actually, because I was going to tie in like that one of my questions, you know, what should we look for? Mm. Whether with the seller, whether with the, the investor, the landlord, whatever. Mm. So if you're looking at some guy and you've got them as a potential, mm-hmm. go on and see their work. Have yeah, a look at other sales. You know, it's the, you know that aspect people say, uh, mystery shop. Uh-huh. You know, so, yes, so you're yeah. not just mystery shop in terms of phoning the office um, to make sure that you feel that even if you're just doing acquiring the property, make sure they're asking the right questions, you know, mm-hmm. make sure that they're, they're trying to um, get the information on that particular um, buyer. You know, um, are they good to go? Uh, have they got a property to sell? Uh, have they spoke to a mortgage advisor? Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of people think that's simply just be able to try to be able to upsell as part of business, but more importantly, that information is obtained to make sure that the person you're sending to their home, mm-hmm. you feel is in a position that um, they, they are in a position to be able to potentially, if they like the property, make an offer. And yet again, it's just the basics of it. Um, and if you miss the shop on that basis, well, why not miss the shop in terms of obviously their website? Yeah. Look at it and, and see what attention to detail, what pride they have in their work. Mm-hmm. Because it's your property, it's your currently your biggest asset. Mm-hmm. So let's make sure that it's been dealt with in the right manner. And it's right. Best and on the photos and stuff we were discussing there, what is your the thoughts on the you know the three sixty virtual tours, the video yeah. walkthroughs? Do you, you playing with that at all? Listen, well, we, we, scope? well, we had a great example of um, if we were selling um, a, a former developer that uh, I've known for a long period of time, and he took on a very very big project out in Denison. Right. Um, and it was um, two um, terraced houses um, over three levels that had been knocked through many years ago to be dead to hospital. Ah. Um, and um, he was changing it back from commercial um, to, to residential right. um, and he'd done a fantastic job of them was it yeah oh they were, they were glorious they really were right. um, the one was um, with six bedrooms five bathrooms three public over three levels and he just done such an incredible job um, refurbishing them uh-huh. and then we went in obviously do our bit in terms of photographs you know, great pride of what it would produce uh-huh. um, and then the employee services of a company to come in and do a kind of walkthrough right um, video tour of it a video one and right. it was fantastic was it you know, it really was and it was a, a more kind of high speed one mm-hmm. um, and it really rattled through it very very quickly because you've only got the attention span for usually a minute and a half to two minutes right so you've got that in your head you, know, you need to do it quicker this. because it's over three levels with so many bedrooms and so many bathrooms then you know you don't want to be sitting there for ten minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, so it has to be and it proved very, very successful. Right. Um and you know, a lot of buyers found it very, very useful. Right. And it was just another tool in order to be able to attract a level of interest. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was great. Um mm. now because obviously not every property is is, is maybe um Due to size, yep. it's, it's maybe not as important, but in this particular case, I thought it worked. So, as a targeted thing, is it? I believe so. Right. I believe so. Okay. The options obviously if any of our clients, if they wish to go, and we'll discuss the merits with them. Mm-hmm. And and this was, we were trying to obtain prices that had never been obtained in that pocket before. We were trying right. to break records. Right. Uh, which we did for on both of them. They both sold at closing dates and, um, and smashed any street records that were available from that pocket. Uh-huh. Um, and, and both for, for one going over just over the 500,000. Right. Uh, and our one just nudging on the 500,000 um, and we felt that our marketing campaign for it um, was, was very much central to that in terms of delivering that footfall mm-hmm. um, and then you, you, you whittle down these people the ones that are interested um, and you create that sense of competition between buyers mm. it's something that without sounding too cheesy once in a lifetime uh, because these properties are so beautiful and the, the developer has done such a fantastic job of them yeah. so that worked incredibly well in that particular case Excellent. but yet again probably maybe Horses for courses, it depends on the property. Yeah, aye, this wee, you know, single bedroom flat over the city said, nah, we might just yeah. do, do the nice photographs. Yeah, potentially, we would just more selling the client, really, yeah. you know, think to yourself, is it really needed? Yeah. Uh, especially if we feel we've got the back of such great advertising in the first instance. Mm-hmm. It's just maybe another added aspect of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think if you work into family accommodation, into houses, which is really has been incredible short demand, mm-hmm. and I think that's one of the cases we've felt this year, is, is anything that's family orientated. Um, and it's got a, a, a relevant school catchment mm-hmm. it's, it's a massive amount of competition for them yeah. um, and that extra tool and to be able to showcase it and greatly because obviously we can get it out in so many different mediums exactly you know it's not just going out on right moving super you know mm-hmm. it's going out on Facebook 
uh, it's great on Twitter, it's great on Instagram, um, mm-hmm. and uh, the feedback we got from that particular two properties, mm-hmm. uh, based on the, the, the additional uh, property video tour we had, we, we, we was very welcome. Was it? Uh, it went down very well, yes. Right, excellent, you'll keep that in mind. And which one of those two are you and your wife staying in now? Uh, unfortunately it? not. <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> not. Um, you never showed her that one, did you? you? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's funny, she's seen the video. Oh uh, God, that was uh, dangerous. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, you know, I must have added a lot of properties uh, yeah. just had that sense of grandeur when you walked in was it you know you walk in the front door the big wide hallway the sweeping staircase <sighs> um, the, the, the probably the, the three and a half metre high ceilings the right. most ornate corners you could possibly imagine was it um, it'd all been reinstated um, all the um, original high skirting boards have been reinstated all the door facings mm-hmm. uh, so spectacular properties brilliant um, and that certainly does help sell for mm-hmm. spectacular um, but uh, no unfortunately um that will swap me by. <laughs> <laughs> so your sellers, keep your name right. What things should sellers know? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, in fact, let me touch on something else because I was talking about the photographs and stuff there. The investors that, that are listening mm-hmm. in, should we dress the property or not dress the property? Ah, well, it really depends. Aha, <laughs> see, oh, typical, um, typical <laughs> solicitor, um, politician I'm, answer. I, 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 I generally do believe that if the property has been refurbished to a very good standard, um, then... Um, you know, you can sell it as is. Right. Because there's there's potentially nothing you're trying to not hide or mask, mm-hmm. but it's um, as quite often as the case is the open you also get that sense of quite sure a lot of listeners out there when they, when they have bought a property whether it's for themselves or it's for being for investment and they went to see it, it's all beautifully furnished and mm. all the curtains are there and the lovely white fittings and it's dressed to to, to an inch of its life and, and then they get the keys and <laughs> <laughs> they look at me okay, nice spots behind that bed, and uh, okay, that, that furniture's being moved out, and I think it's a bit of an equaliser, I think. Right. At that point. Um, so, no, listen, if, if, if you. I'm liking my double bed not fitting here. What kind of bed did they have? Well, like, well no, it's, I like it. It's, maybe it's too personal to me, because I always remember I bought our, our second flat, and then um, the person was kind of doing it up and stuff, and it was looking great, and blown away at the viewing, and, and then we, <laughs> we took keys for it, and that day, and then went to the bedroom. And uh, they bought the obviously bed had been against the wall, um, and we actually noticed they'd only painted the scuttle boards up to the bed. Oh! <laughs> um, and then you just had this patch, and I was like, "You're kidding me on!" <sighs> um, so I said, "That's a bit off off track." Oh, but uh, you know, a bit, if you're asking about it to be dressed, and mm. if it's in the budget, right? And, and as an investor, it's all about the the, the, the end product, and, and you know what the bottom line is. And if it's if it's in the budget. Uh-huh. Uh, and you still have it there and it's not been eaten up by anything else and uh-huh. I think there's great merits to it something to consider there really is because it just gives that ability for people you're not relying on their, their imagination uh-huh. um, you, you're selling them, this is what you're looking for this is what you want and this right. is how it's going to look uh-huh. and you can really envision yourself in the property uh-huh. but as I generally do believe hopefully most people have got the common sense to be able to see through that uh-huh. uh, but it's interesting that it certainly can obviously give you that big extra edge if right. it's in the budget there and certainly uh-huh. recommend you could do it yeah is it something that helps you if it, if it goes to closing dates and you've got people coming in and out and, you get, and they can just quickly see it all? Oh, very much is so. Is it one of those things? And, and, and I think in properties, I think if we really delved into the correlation between um, and presentation for regards to even just how beautifully presented somebody is with their furniture, mm-hmm. um, you know, every people have got a different way of living, uh, mm-hmm. if it's particularly nicely dressed, mm-hmm. then it really does make a difference. Right. You know, if it's nice furniture and, 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 and nice, obviously, be it canvases or pictures on the wall and it's quite sharp and stylish and in the sense that you're probably trying to sell a lifestyle there to a mm-hmm. certain degree and people really do buy into that because uh-huh. they walk in and say oh this is my taste this is what I feel I would have and I like that there and that's right. a nice piece there um, and you know where some people get a little bit blinded by that potentially right. uh-huh. but if we're talking from a sales aspect that's our job to, to ensure that we're getting maximum exposure and best feedback and potentially more offers then yeah. it's everybody's interest to be able to follow through on that mm-hmm. whereas other people look at it walk in and, and they can say well do you know what I don't care if it's a wee bit shabby around the edges mm-hmm. um, I can see what I want I this property to be uh-huh. and they want to put their own stamp on it yeah. um, rather than buying an, an, an interpretation of what somebody else thinks they want mm-hmm. and I think that's a difference and I think it just comes down to personalities of the buyer to be fair right okay staying in the seller mentality the investor landlord mentality mm-hmm. passing things on 
the outside, mm-hmm. the curb appeal. Curb appeal. You know, yeah. we come across so many, but okay, I've got the refurbishment just nailed to the penny. I know yeah. exactly what I've got mm-hmm. the boiler and the rewire and the, yeah. the, the kind of wiring board, etc. I know what I'm doing, and yeah. my builder's going to put the same kitchen thing in again. But then they miss the outside. Yeah. They, they don't, don't think about the garden, the, the kind of furnish. Is it a big problem? Very much so. Yeah. I, I think it is a big problem. And um, I think if you break it down to, uh, even within the kind of free build radius of Glasgow City Centre, mm-hmm. a lot of that is made up of obviously apartments and flatted properties, be yeah. it private or be it modern. Um, and, and, and the mainstay is probably more period than flats. Um, and you can have the most beautiful property inside, um, but if you walk through that front door and um, the, the course, and, and sometimes glass courses are maybe not going to be the most impeccable. Sure. Um, and um, you know, most people maybe expect it's not going to be lavish. Um, mm-hmm. But if it's particularly poor, it's sometimes mm-hmm. it's a shame for for sellers because mm-hmm. they put so much work into their own individual property that they own. But there's yeah. a common aspect to it. Yeah. Um, and it can be very frustrating. Um, and I generally do believe that if if somebody's walking in the front door um, in the course and they're walking up the stairs, they've probably got that in their mindset. But then that's totally removed and they walk in and they view a beautiful property inside. Right. But you need to come back down those stairs. Every day. You know. Yeah, so if they're coming work. back down those stairs. You know, what was their first impression has been changed because they went in through the front door into the actual property itself and been blown away. Mm-hmm. But then that maybe subsides slightly because they need to come back down those stairs to leave the property and then they've got that same negative thought right. um, that they first had before obviously what to the Cornwall door. Yeah. So that is maybe something that's quite hard for, for a lot of sellers to be able to deal with. Right. Um, but anything you possibly can do, and that's what I suggest to people, if there is an issue there that's maybe a common fact, get on the phone to your factor first one. Uh-huh. You know, try maybe say, and I know you're doing it, maybe say, well, why should I do it? Um, because, you know, it's a shared responsibility, but you're doing it for your own interest at that point in time. Exactly. And if you can remedy the situation, you can get out there and washing down your tiles, getting rid of all the cobwebs in the Conwell Coast. I would personally do it because you're taking control of, even though as a common aspect, it's in your best interest to do so. Mm-hmm. And if you're more talking about family houses that do have obviously detached, then detached out of the LB, yep. you obviously, you are in control of it. Uh-huh. And I think that's historically where we look at the seasonal trends of the market. Um, you usually tend to find that there are properties that have front and back gardens and are more orientated towards the family market, tend to go quite seasonal in terms of obviously early spring. Right. Um, you know, prior to maybe the summer holidays, mm-hmm. the certain calmer the market, just anticipating the families away in their holidays, Glasgow Fair, still of quite course. relevant. Yeah. Um, and then after that, obviously the schools going back, you've got a surge of properties come on just towards maybe the, the, the middle part of August. Mm-hmm. And then you do have a control over it. And why people tend to have it so their hedges look in bloom, their, their, their lawns looking nice. And that will always be true. Now, I think that's maybe been eroded away slightly, the seasonal trends, because it's been more a case of, well, I need to move now, mm-hmm. um, and I've seen a property I want, I'm moving job for whatever reason, or I need to move because I've got another kid in the way. So I think that's superseded it, and I don't think it's quite as ingrained as it one was. Mm-hmm. But if you go back to yet again the ability to be able to make sure that hedge is nicely trimmed, uh, and the garden's look as possibly, the best it possibly can be, that's very, very important. Mm-hmm. Um, because yet again, if it's not reflective of also what the property is inside, and you're getting a mix match, mm-hmm. you're getting a lovely interior, but poor outside, yeah. and you can control it, do it. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. it. It's going to make a difference. It is. Tremendous. Looking forward. What's the plans for the business? Plans for the business? Yeah. Are we um, growing? Are we moving? Are we franchising? Well, we've we'll, we'll, we'll recently just moved to office about um, six months ago, which right. was a big move for us. Uh-huh. Uh, and we're just based um, right between our two key areas. So we're just up in, in Charing Cross just mm-hmm. now. Um, and um, I think that's been a great move for us. Um, and um, the, the, the objective for this year is just further growth. Is it? Um, it's just trying to get awareness um, and it's okay for estate agents that have been about for 20, 25 years plus yeah. and we can all write them off and they're all still currently on the high streets but how much longer we don't know <laughs> uh, but they're, they're still currently there so, so we have that challenge and, and like I mentioned previously we just want the opportunity to be able to present to people and say okay well here is that alternative option you know, you, you, you could quite easily go your high street option that many people have done for generations. Um, you're being bombarded by the, the, the power of online advertising um, through a lot of big players spending frightening amounts of money in advertising on a monthly basis. Yeah. Frightening amounts. Um, and um, if you don't feel comfortable with that aspect, well, we're here, here to be able to give that happy medium. Mm-hmm. Um, and I generally do believe that happy medium is attainable. So our idea is, is, is just to be able to get 
through people's gores. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of our business, and probably the overwhelming majority of our business, comes from referrals mm-hmm. and recommendations, and that's no bad way to build a business. Yeah, it's no bad way to build a Classic business. Word of yeah, mouth. word of mouth. Yeah. It takes a little bit longer from there, mm-hmm. um, but um, if that is uh, that's the way we're moving forward, and and, and that's the way we hope to be able to to grow um, our business. It's, it's just the same way we have done by like giving excellent customer service, getting great testimonials, and making sure people are delighted with their service. And, and we're in that social environment four months down the line and somebody mentions oh, I think they sell my house and, and hopefully we've got a few tea leaders out there yeah. uh, to stand up and say well do you know what I knew this time Stuart Barry from, from Walker Wild Estate Agents they've done a fantastic job for me I was delighted with the service um, and that will obviously allow us to grow our business um, that as well is coupled obviously with emphasising on social media it's mm. a great tool yeah. in order to be able to promote your business and that's something we're very focused on as well mm-hmm. so growth, growth, growth for 2018 Tremendous, tremendous. So I'm going to be respectful of this man's time. Stuart, for your time today, for your inputs and opinions and everything, thanks very much. You're very, very welcome, Richard. It's a pleasure. Hi folks, it's Richard here again. I really hope that you enjoyed today's show. Now listen, I've got two links to help support you on your property journey and I want you to write these down when it's safe to do so. You might be driving in your car just now listening to the podcast and that's fine but please make sure that you get back to this and write down these links. Okay, are you ready? Got your pen in hand? So the first one, thisweekinproperty.com. Now that's the website for this podcast. On there, make sure you subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out. What you can also do on there is catch up on tons and tons of past episodes. There are hours and hours of property related content and some amazing guests with some fantastic insights to help you on your property journey. So that is this week in property.com. Okay, next link, propertyprotege.com. Now, let me spell that one out for you. P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y, P-R-O-T-E-G-E. That's propertyprotege.com. Now what's it all about? Well, the Property Protégé Intensive is designed to give you the lift that you need into the world of property. And if you've already started, if you've already got some experience, then this can help you accelerate your progress even further. The experiences that people have had at Protégé and the success that they've achieved afterwards has been life-changing for many people. So go there right now if you're serious about property and if you want to build a highly successful property business. That's propertyprotege.com. So there you go. That's two links to some fantastic resources that are going to help you. And listen, talking about help, can you help me to help other people? You see, the more that we can share this podcast then more people can learn from the fantastic guests that I've been so lucky to talk to. How can you help? Well, it's very simple and very quick. Just a short review on iTunes is going to help make that happen. If you go to thisweekinproperty.com forward slash iTunes, that will guide you to the very place that you will be able to help other people. So thank you. Thanks for doing that. And thanks for listening into the show. And I look forward to bringing another great guest to you in the next show.